Now, when we're talking about PC component, storage is usually a component that is often neglected as compared to the CPU and GPUs. Because of that, a lot of us don't really know how our storage can actually affect the performance in our PC. So, that's what we'll be finding out today. PCIe NVMe Gen 4 PCIe NVMe Gen 3 and of course, your classic SATA SSD. How choosing these different type of SSD can affect the performance of your PC. So, the main thing we wanted to find out between these different type of SSD are the boot up times of Windows between these type of SSD, the launch and load times of games, the file transfer speed of small files as well as big file, and of course, the video importing speed into a video editing software by di using different type of SSD. So for those mentioned tests, these are our test setup. And in order to prevent any slowdown from the processor side of things, we decided to use the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X as it is AMD's fastest processor at the moment and shouldn't have any slowdown issue when we're doing big file transfer tests on our setup. So for all our tests, we conducted them as how we always do with a three run averages. And the first test that we did was Crystal Disk Mark. And on paper, or well in this case benchmark, we can see that the Gen 4 NVMe SSD is about 10 times faster than our SATA SSD over here. So this should indicate a 10 times faster load times going to a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, right? Well. Not exactly, especially if you look at our charts over here with the boot time of Windows, load times of games and launching time of games being almost identical between all three of these SSD. So you really won't be getting much improvement by going to a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. So, what does all this mean? Does this mean a SATA SSD is as fast as a Gen 4 NVMe SSD? Is all those extra numbers just a marketing tactic by the brands? Well, not exactly either, as in our next test that we do, which are file transfer, we did a small file transfer first, which is a 30 gigabyte file, and we can clearly see that the Gen 4 NVMe SSD is a lot faster than the SATA SSD, being about two minutes faster. Now on paper, two minutes might not seem that big, but it's very fast when the Gen 4 NVMe SSD only needed around 20 seconds to complete the test, whereas the SATA SSD over here needed two minutes and 20 seconds plus to finish the test. That's a big difference. And the Gen 3 NVMe SSD over here placed as a nice in-between between them with it having a respectable 48 seconds transfer time. But this does put it closer to the Gen 4 NVMe SSD instead of the SATA SSD. Something to take note there for sure. Now, the next test is even more obvious to show their differences. By doing a large file transfer, which is around 108 gigs, in this case we used GTA 5 to do the file transfer, and we can see that the Gen 4 NVMe SSD only needed about around one minute time to finish a transfer of a whole 100 gig, whereas the SATA SSD over here needed about half an hour. Now that is a very big difference. The Gen 3 NVMe SSD over here performed quite well as well as it only needed around three minutes to complete, complete that transfer. So this is quite a big difference when it comes to file transfer. So from all we can see of the results, does this mean that if you're someone who does a lot of file transfer on a daily basis, you should just opt for the NVMe SSD? Yes, and a bit of no, as another test that we conducted as well as we were transferring files from an external SSD into this drive, 
the time that they need to transfer a 30 gigabyte file into themselves was actually identical and all of them needing around two minutes time to transfer a 30 gig file. This means that they are likely to be in a way bottleneck or limited by the external SSD's transfer speed. So it's certainly something to keep in mind as well if you're choosing this SSD. If you're someone who uses external drive a lot, maybe an NVMe SSD won't be much different with a SATA SSD. However, if you are going to transfer an internal thing from your own SSD within your own SSD, then yeah, I would say NVMe SSD is the way to go. Now, we wanted to see the time differences for this SSD when it comes to file transfer or video importing in this case of raw footages into their video editing suite. And as we can see from the charts, the Gen 4 NVMe SSD was about four times faster than the SATA SSD. So if you're a video editor by trade, this is definitely a very big difference. And all this testing was thanks to our in-house video editor, Amiru as well, as he told me this were the result. And for the test for this transfer of video import, we actually use our own video footages from our previous video of Gigabyte B650M motherboard MP. Now, the last thing I want to talk about for this SSD are the temperature. As I believe, this is usually the thing that is skimmed over by a lot of people. So for this, we know that SSD do get quite warm if you're doing a lot of file transfer or if you're running benchmark on them. But how hot do they get exactly? Well, for this, we conducted the temperature monitoring with hardware monitor and we measured the temperature after a three run of Crystal Disk Mark. And here's their temps. And as you can see, the NVMe SSD gets quite warm, especially the Gen 4 NVMe SSD, with it hitting a staggering 89 degrees Celsius. But of course, this was done without an M.2 heatsink. So if you're planning to get a motherboard with an NVMe SSD, do try to get one with an M.2 cover or heatsink to prevent it from overheating. Now for SATA SSD, the temperature concerns aren't very concerning at all as it only hit a temperature of 46 degrees after a 3-run benchmark of it. So this means that SATA SSD by themselves don't actually get very hot. Now this is a very nice to hear thing for a lot of people as quite a lot of people actually told me that they were quite concerned that their SATA SSD might get very hot as most SATA SSD are actually placed behind a casing and they don't get a lot of airflow at the back. But after doing this test, we can see that SATA SSD don't really get very warm at all as it only stayed at around 46 degrees after the benchmark and test. So with those findings, which type of SSD should you get? Well, it really comes down to your use case and most importantly, your budget. The SATA SSD performed the slowest during our file transfer test, but it also cost the least, with the Vulcan Z costing around 400 ringgit, and it will also have the most compatibility with older PCs, as you only need a motherboard with SATA support. Whereas, if you're someone who works with file transfers a lot, or do video editing a lot, going for the Gen 4 NVMe SSD will certainly be a great option, as it will speed up a lot of your work processes. However, the cost of it will certainly be something to consider as well, as the price for the WD Black SN 770 is around 500 ringgit, while the Gen 3 NVMe SSD strikes a nice balance between price and performance, offering performance that's near a Gen 4 NVMe SSD and being slightly cheaper, with the WD Blue SN 350 priced at around 460 ringgit only. So, with this information, we hope you can make a more informed decision on your next storage purchase. So, that's all the time we have for this video. We hope that you find this video informative and will help you in your next storage purchasing experience. And do tell us, what kind of storage are you guys rocking yourself? Is it a SATA SSD or, with the, or is it the newest and latest and greatest Gen 4 NVMe SSD? That's all from us today. Take care and goodbye.